The Ford 999 was a nameplate attached to two distinct but very similar racers that were built by Henry Ford during the early 20th century. Now, they began as separate entities but were virtually mechanically identical and parts were swapped between them as needed, making the identities and legacies inseparable. Hi, I'm Ken Smith and we're going to take a look at the famous Ford 999. Now, Henry Ford knew the value of racing, and I actually did a video on this on the sweepstakes car. I'll put a link down in the description. But having built and driven sweepstakes, which was a 26-horsepower model that won a race against Alexander Winton, he actually began his automotive legacy in a race car, not an automobile. And the proceeds of that race essentially started the Henry Ford Company in March of 1902. So with Ford already having some issues with his second automotive company, the Henry Ford Company, that he formed in March of 1902, he eventually left that company. Leland took it over and made it into what is now the Cadillac Motor Company in 1902. So Henry Ford eventually collaborated with bicycle racer Tom Cooper and a team of several assistants to create two similar racing cars that were as yet unnamed. Now the result was a huge engine with a bare chassis attached to it and literally no body work whatsoever. Both of the cars were extremely heavily engineered with an 1156 cubic inch 18.9 liter inline four cylinder engine. Now, just to kind of give you an idea of just how big this engine was, it is twice the size, practically, of what sat in a 2013 Dodge SRT Viper, which had a 512 cubic inch, 8.4 liter engine. And in 2013, that was the biggest engine ever put in an American production model up to that point. Now, the power that was quoted at that time for 999's engine was anywhere from 70 to 100 horsepower. The car did not have a rear suspension at all. It also did not have a differential. And steering was controlled by a crude pivoting metal bar, similar to a straight handlebar on a mountain bicycle, but with upright hand grips at the ends to operate it. The total cost of this racing project was $5,000. Now, Ford was shrewd, and there's no question about it, and his name was attached to the cars and the legend behind it, but he had actually sold his stake in them for $800 to Barney Oldfield and Cooper when the cars had refused to start during a test drive a mere two weeks before the first race. Now, ultimately, Ford abandoned his share in the racing money, but here's where the shrewdness of Henry Ford comes in. He reserved the right to promotions and publicity of the cars, which secured his image behind their eventual successes. He, meanwhile, built up the Ford Motor Company, which surpassed Winton in terms of production by the end of 1903. Now, in the summer of 1902, Cooper and Oldfield carried out further work and eventually got the Red One working. Now, the Red One was named 999 for the Empire State Express, number 999, and that was a 440 American steam locomotive, which had allegedly set a world speed record of 112.5 miles per hour on May 10th, 1893, and that made it the first man-made vehicle to exceed 100 miles per hour under its own propulsion. The yellow one was eventually named Arrow to the connotations of a sleek arrow flying through the air. Similar to sweepstakes, the engine had no oil pan or valve cover, and thus it sprayed a tremendous amount of oil onto the driver at speed. Now in this 1952 classic remake movie, 
you can kind of get a feel for what it was like to have built the engine for 999 and eventually assemble the car and get it into uh, the racing hands of Barney Oldfield. And you can get a feel for the race or how it would have appeared on the racetrack as well. Interesting to note is Barney Oldfield's signature chomping of the cigar was his idea of protecting his front teeth in case he was in an accident. In Ford's genius, he again challenged Winton to a race. Oldfield, despite having absolutely no driving experience, learned how to race the 999. In October of 1902, when the car debuted, a five-mile race known as the Manufacturer's Challenge Cup put Ford and Winton against each other once again. Oldfield easily won that race. The 999 set a course speed record at that track at Gross Point and went on to tour America and score many other victories. Cooper retained ownership of the car for its racing career while Oldfield ultimately pursued a racing career, ironically, with Winton, against whom he had raced at the outset. But the story gets even better. Henry Ford set a land speed record of 91.37 miles per hour with the iconic 999 model. He himself drove the four-wheeled race vehicle on the frozen surface of Michigan's Lake St. Clair with a wooden chassis and no body or hood attached to it. To put things frankly, the Ford 999 was as simplistic and schematic as a vehicle could get around this time. But Ford's diversion from failed automotive businesses turned into a longtime pursuit for racing. His innovation is seen explicitly from the 999's design and performance. This new world record achievement at Lake St. Clair was short-lived. A driver named William K. Vanderbilt upstaged Ford's victory at Ormond Beach, Florida soon after. Following the success of the 999 model, Ford began approaching vehicle production from a racing mindset and went on to produce the car for the masses, the Ford Model T. To promote his innovation, Ford regularly entered the Model T in racing events until he had garnered enough widespread success with a Ford Motor Company that racing was unnecessary. And in many ways, Ford used racing as a means of advertising. And boy, did it work. About a decade after Oldfield's career in racing began, owing it to the 999, Ford Motor Company began reaching national notoriety. Ford Motor Company forever changed the way vehicles were manufactured with the introduction of the moving assembly line. And thanks to Ford's innovation, the Highland Park, Michigan plant was able to reduce assembly speed of a chassis from a standard 12 and a half hours or so to nearly 90 minutes. And this allowed Ford to produce a higher output than all the other car makers combined. Now, I'd say that's pretty impressive. So where is Ford 999 today? You can see this remarkable car at the Henry Ford Museum. And thanks to the Henry Ford, I was able to find the information not only about the car and its history, but also being able to videotape it. So remember to give us a like and subscribe. Super important to us. Most of all, be blessed.